Hey guys, even here, and the topic of this video will be Patrick Dur, his potential switch to classic physique, and also a whole lot of drama that happened after he posted this, after this, let's call it, incident. You might be thinking, even you're late to the party, this is old news, it happened almost two days ago, but this is not the topic of this video. It's not just the news of him switching, or how would he do, blah blah blah. No, this is mainly about the aftermath. So this is how the whole thing started, he posted this photo of him doing the abs and thighs pose, not looking super classic, but regardless, his caption was, what if the comeback wasn't for open? What if it was for classic physique? What if I cared more about my condition, lines and aesthetics more than size? But if I took all this time to break down muscle and switch categories? This is how it all started. So, Instagram pages Fernando Arroyo and who is the best bodybuilder made some comparison photos, such as this one, this is the first one they surfaced, and even though Patrick is a couple of inches shorter than Chris, here he looks pretty much the same height, he still didn't like the ratio, so he made this comment. Let me just say you are dumb <laughs> with these comparisons and the way you scale the pics. Respect to Chris, but we are not in the same league. I'm heavier and bigger than he is. Nice try, though. Hmm, Patrick taking shots at Chris. Anyways, Fernando's response was, uh, You are a crybaby, I only do this for fun and you take everything very seriously. Which is true, I definitely agree with Fernando here. And naturally, what followed were the comments, the long explanations of other top pro bodybuilders who are very active on social media, who are prone to drama as well, who like to participate in this kind of comparisons, in all kind of drama. And of course, in the first one, we have Sergio Oliva and Ian Valier. Sergio Oliva is kind of, he's the same like Patrick. He's very sensitive, he takes everything way too seriously. Ian though, yeah, sometimes he's serious, but most often he's just having fun, not taking things too seriously. So Sergio Oliva, the first comment was his, and there are plenty more of his comments, and he's basically defending Patrick, saying that the, the, the photo is not scaled right, that this is not the best version of Patrick, blah blah blah, but uh, what Ian said, that was more interesting to me, he says, LOL, Chris is 6 foot 1, and on stage, close to 240, with amazing condition, Chris could stand next to basically any open pro and not look small, I've seen him stand and pose next to Rami, and Rami doesn't dwarf him any more than he does 90% of the open bodybuilders. Anyways, lol. His structure is ridiculous, and he's tall and wide. But you know what? I'm not convinced yet. I still didn't buy it. As I'm sure most of you, I am also wondering, what is his actual weight when he's shredded, and how much exactly does he need to cut down for the, for the classic? Is he really that heavy? And is that really all muscle? Is he really big or just heavy? Because there are people who have very dense bones and they are heavier than they look. This is the first question that I had and I'm sure you also are wondering. So let's cross this one off the list first. So after all this, after all that happened, Patrick made a post of himself, obviously shredded, pretty much peeled, you know, for the, for the stage. He's probably like a couple of days or a day out of a show. And he's giving us his weight. So he is 226 in this pick. And you guys remember that Ian just said that Chris is 240 on stage. The next thing that the Patrick says is whatever I ultimately decide to do, I will do it because it's my body, my career, and my choice. It's about health and wealth. Everything else is white noise. So he's still considering it. The reason why he's doing it is. Well, there are a couple of reasons. First thing that he said was he wants to maintain a, a nice classic look, you know, the aesthetics. He wants to keep a small waist, a good condition and stuff. And now he's talking about health as well. So there are a lot of reasons for anybody to switch to classic. And if somebody can actually do well, like Patrick, maybe, maybe, you know what happened before when top pro bodybuilders did this, like Regan Grimes, not very well. And others, there are many others. So, I don't know what to expect, really. Patrick, he's very classic, but would he still do well? We're gonna talk about that in a moment. But first, let's check what the weight cap is for each height. And we are not exactly sure how tall Patrick is. 
he didn't really make that clear, but from what I heard, from what I googled, he's about 5 foot 10. He might be 5 foot 9, he might be 5 foot 11, I'm not sure, but based on the comparisons against the other guys, I think 5 foot 10 is probably pretty accurate. So, as you can see, the weight for his height, let's, let's assume that's his height, is uh, 207 pounds, which is less than 20 pounds away from his weight in that photo that wasn't on stage, but he was shredded. So if he is 5 foot 10, then he would have to lose some muscle, quite a bit, actually, unfortunately. He would have to lose less than 20 pounds, but that's a lot of muscle, and that's not easy to do anyways. And also, if he is 5 foot 9, then that would be way too much. It would be 25 pounds of muscle. And uh, even if he depletes super, super hard, dehydrates and everything, and he actually loses some muscle by, I don't know, going off the juice, off the gear, then his physique will change dramatically, for the worse. He will just look like a faded version of himself. Which is exactly what happened to Regan Grimes, and also it happened to another great open bodybuilder from Europe, from another federation, Peter Molnar. Peter Molnar in the open looked like he can win the Mr. Olympian Classic Physique. Now, in Classic Physique, He's, I don't know, out of top 10, something like that. He definitely did not meet up the expectations of the audience, of the fans. And it seems like to be, you know, sort of a trend, you know. All open bodybuilders, when they lose muscle, when they get flat, when they dehydrate, when they lose all that fullness, the pop that they have, when they have the freedom to not worry about the weight, that's when they look at their best. When you have to worry about this kind of stuff, stress yourself, your mind, your body, and lose muscle, lose fullness, yeah, it usually doesn't go very well. But who knows, it might be different with Patrick Moore. Let's cut to the chase. Let's talk about what is probably the biggest question here. Is Patrick Moore classic? Is he super aesthetic? Does he have a classic structure? Well, you know, among the top open bodybuilders, yeah, he does look, you know, pretty classic. He has a vacuum, he has a small waist, he has a streamlined physique, he is small. So yeah, in that regard, he does look very classic. But if you compare this front double bicep to, let's say, any front double bicep in classic physique in top 6, no, top 10, I don't think his front double bicep is any better, any more classic than the other guys in top 10. Probably even more than that, probably more than top 10. I do not find this front double bicep super classic. It looks a little bit rugged, like everything is just thrown up there. I don't know, I mean, his arms don't really look symmetrical compared to his, uh, his the rest of his body. They look, the biceps are looking a little bit big, you know, too big, weird. And also, like, uh, the chest, the lats, it just doesn't really have that flow that classic physique should have. And the worst thing is his quads. His legs, his, his, his quads mainly from the front. So the shape of it is just not good. But this is just one pose. There are other poses. And overall, I can tell you my opinion. I find his back double bicep pretty classic. This is the Arnold Classic 2020 and he was in super good shape here. So his glutes are soft, but the back looks aesthetic. Side chest, also, I find that pretty aesthetic. Pretty classic, yeah. Front lat spread, it's not a classic pose, but still, it doesn't look that classic. Abs and thighs again, no, not very classic, especially because of the quads and also the flow of his upper body. And one pose where he's actually really freaking killing it is side tricep. I think this pose, he's overall better than Chris. And that's the only pose that I find him looking better than Chris. Not just more classic, just overall better, you know, for bodybuilding or classic standards. This is the pose that Patrick looks the best at by far. And he does look really good. That small, tiny waist, such a small area for the abdomen, the thick and big chest, big arms, legs, big everything. It just looks really insane. It's a really good side tricep. The thing with Patrick's physique is that he has really long limbs, especially arms. And usually guys with big limbs, with big arms, have smaller arms. Patrick, it seems like he never really used oil, synthol, but his arms are looking big which is something you want to achieve you have long, if you have long arms, but if it actually happens, like here, he just looks kind of strange, don't you think? Alright, enough of the analysis, let's go back to Patrick's Instagram, let's check out for some more drama. 
is there any more drama for us yes sir there is so we're gonna begin with this photo that he posted last uh, here he said don't get it twisted back to business what does this mean now who the hell knows is he talking about not really moving to classic getting back to trying to grow for the open i don't know you tell me but before this post fernando arroyo made another comparison and here he made patrick bigger than before how exactly did he do it he made him taller that's it what else could have he done i mean patrick was complaining so what fernando did he made him taller so here we have an interesting comment from sergio oliva jr he says i'm first to speak when fernando arroyo cheap shots my peers but i'll be first to give props for taking the time to make comparisons more accurate is he serious here i mean is he just defending patrick because they're friends or something because obviously these guys are not the same height this is not a good scaling so <laughs> I, I, this was my comment it was a little bit sarcastic i said great job scaling them but i think you made patrick moore a bit too big isn't he five foot nine and chris six foot one and fernando's response was i made him bigger so he wouldn't get so mad <laughs> i guess fernando was just tired from patrick you know bashing him every post he makes every comparison always there and you know, always up for a fight for drama and he just made him taller he made him a couple of inches taller and i guess now the comparison is fine but let's be real six foot one for chris and five foot nine or five foot ten for patrick i don't know how well how well <laughs> scaled is this yeah i get that patrick is heavier for his height but does this really mean muscle and does he have better structure than chris sure he has bigger arms bigger biceps and triceps but much more than that i don't know i don't know i don't know i guess we won't find out unless we see them both on stage at the same time but as for now we have my youtube channel some other youtube channels and some really cool instagram pages so make sure to follow fernando arroyo and check out these nice these awesome comparisons and tell me in the comment section down below of this video what do you think how well would patrick moore do in the classic how much weight does he really need to lose and is he really that much bigger than Chris as he says that he is in another league? Is that really true? Me personally? I don't think I don't, I don't think so. I don't buy it. I don't feel that way. But again, I don't know. We're going to see in the future maybe, hopefully, potentially. But for now, guys, tell me your opinion. Like this video if you enjoyed it. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much guys for watching. All the best and bye-bye.